Hello there, and welcome to Firmacraft. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am. This, uh, this series has been getting a lot of love. I think that's because of Il Mango. He recently started his own Terraformacraft series, and um, Terraformacraft is getting searched a lot more. So, I'll happily take that. But uh, today, well, we gotta finish our barn here, but we're gonna be talking about animal husbandry a bit. Now, I still have a lot more animals to go out and collect. Oh, and it starts raining. Before I go out and collect more though, let's uh, go over some of the information on animals. Here, you know, we have, you know, donkeys, sheep, goats. Let's look at our donkey for a moment. He has, aside from its name and mouth hearts, jump height, speed, that's here because of, I think it's Jade, makes it so that information is in the tooltip. Specifically, not necessarily Terraformacraft. But then you see we have the sex, the familiarity, size, wear and tear. Obviously, you're going to need one of each sex in order to breed them. But familiarity, animals that you collect from the wild will only be able to have a maximum familiarity of... It's supposed to be 30. This is 32. I think that's a rounding error. You have to increase the familiarity before you can start collecting resources from them. So... This sheep here, familiarity is 12. When it gets up to, I believe, 20, I can start harvesting wool from it if I had shears. We have size. I don't know how much size ties into how, many, how much you get when you shear, say a sheep, but I do know it affects how much meat you can collect from the animals once you've butchered them. For mounts, you need familiarity above, I think it's 20 to actually start riding them. And then we have wear and tear. Wear and tear is essentially the age of the animal. As you breed them and or harvest from them, that wear and tear will go up. I'm not sure if size affects how quickly wear and tear increases. We'll have to find that out as we go, as we play along. But wear and tear will increase, as I said, as you breed and as you harvest. And so you're gonna have to make sure you keep constantly, uh, keep a constant cycle of breeding going on so you don't run into an issue where all your farm animals have 100% wear and tear because then you can no longer breed them and no longer harvest from them. So. That's a little recap on animal husbandry. What we're going to do is run inside for a few minutes, collect some resources, and we're going to start going out and building little outposts. Since I do now have mob spawns on the surface turned on, traveling at nighttime is extremely dangerous. Building little outposts will give me a place to hide during the night if I don't make it back in time. Okay, it is now morning. I am heading out from the base with a whole bunch of resources. And uh, yeah, I'm going to explain this in a bit, but I was doing some modding yesterday. I actually used to mod a lot. I never published any of my mods. They were all private, private mods for myself, but I would mod games like RimWorld, pretty much every Paradox game, uh, the Total War series, Fallout. So I actually love modding but I haven't been doing any since I started recording videos until yesterday. See, as much as I love Terraformacraft, it is sorely lacking in some building options, roofs, fences, furniture. So what I did yesterday was I downloaded five of the McCall's mods. Oop, don't want to get too close to those boys. Don't want to wake them up. That would not end well for me. Doors, fences, roofs, roofs, bridges, and one other that I can't remember right now. And so I uh, downloaded them, but of course, they don't use the Terraformer Craft resources. So I used Craft Tweaker, which does come with this mod pack, and I adjusted the recipe on all of them. So if I just go here quickly. Oak bridges now use Terraformacraft oak fences and slabs. 
Acacia uses Acacia. A uh, big difference is Dark Oak uses Hickory, since there is no Dark Oak in Terraformer Craft. But I tried to, uh, I tried to keep them the same. So the, uh, they should look the same. Some of the Terraformer Craft, uh, wood types are a different shade, but that shouldn't make too much of a difference. At least not aesthetically. In fact, it adds more options, so that just looks even better. But this way, I can actually make the house look nicer. But it did take me about 10 hours of of uh, editing yesterday to get it done, which coincidentally is about as long as it takes me to uh, record and edit a video. So I hope you appreciate the work I did. Whoa. OK. That just scared me a lot. He's still behind me, isn't he? Okay. Um, I might need to change my pants. <laughs> no, this should be fine. Let's build our first little outpost over here. And it's it's really not going to be anything special. Just a uh, place to hide during the night. That will have to do. Ooh, that is not how I thought it would look. Should have probably tested it back at base. <laughs> I just completely messed this up, didn't I? Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll come back and fix it later, but you get the idea. We're going to these little huts set up around more well in the world. So I have a place to hide during the night when all the zombies and whatnot are spawning and coming after me. So while we're uh, waiting for the sun to rise, let's uh, talk a little more about McCrawls. So as I said, I took the recipes and I updated them to include the Terraforma Craft resources since you can't get the vanilla resources for them. I made a few changes that seem more fitting, like uh, using supplementary ropes instead of string for rope bridges. I did not touch most of the stone. Uh, you can't get these stone types anyway in Vault, um, vault Hunters, in Terraformer Craft, with the exception of kind of these stone bricks, which look like the Andesite stone brick, but we're not going to worry about it. You can make uh, bricks. So the brick bridges, the brick roofs, those are still in. Bamboo is. I didn't touch bamboo. Since you can get bamboo, just need to find it. And I'm not in a tropical area. So finding bamboo will take me, well, probably leaving this island I'm on and searching for another continent. Uh, the doors have been updated. As I said, I did try to match the wood colors, but for example, birch in Terraformer Craft is a lot darker than vanilla birch. I didn't worry about it too much. Our dark oak is now hickory. That's the closest in look. Uh, I also did the fences. So these now use the Terraformer Craft resources. No crimson, no warped wood. Can't get them in Terraformer Craft. I'm not going to mess around with trying to figure that out. I haven't done these these ones yet. I don't think I can even bother anyway, with the exception of, well, these don't even have a brick version. So yeah, roofs, they, uh, I tried to get them as close as possible again. Then we have the roofing hammer. The, there's another hammer somewhere. Uh, the window ha hammer. I don't know where that is right here. And the 
pliers for the bridges. They all just use a single ingot. Doesn't matter what type, along with sticks to make them because this has no use outside of its parent mod and it has no durability. So it really doesn't matter if I actually craft it using the anvil or smelting or whatnot. It's just very simple, one off. You never go and break it. It's just used for the aesthetics. I'm not worrying about it too much. The uh, shingles or shutters, those are in. Lines will work also. The glass, actually you can make the glass anyway. Just uh, making glass is a bit of a pain. <laughs> no pun intended. Pain. Window pain. Um, and all these windows are now in. Again, exception of the warped, the crimson, and I haven't done the andesite. I could probably get the andesite to work because I could probably replace that with raw andesite. Raw diorite. Raw granite. Yeah, I could, actually, I might go back later on and get these to work. And... Probably see about getting these uh, stone parapets to work also. Uh, is it safe? I think it's safe. Okay. So we're here. Made a little outpost. There's our main base. This gives me a safe place to run and hide at during the night. And I am looking for more animals. I saw a donkey just over this way. Oh, and I did, I did add one more mod. I got free cam working again. Which is going to be nice for showing off my builds. We have ruined. Did I touch this one already? I did not. Ash? A drum? Nice. Now I've got a second instrument. And I've got a drum to go along with my bass guitar. So we're going to go around. I'm going to look for... I'm going to run away from the bear. I already had one run in with a bear today. Duck, you might want to run. It is a bear that way. Um, Yeah, let's go look for... I really need sheep. And I want a horse. Oh, I need cow. I had a cow. I had a really big cow. And then a creeper got into my pen as I was checking out the cow. And blew up me, the cow, and a llama. So I've got a lot of food and no cow. Here we go. We got ourselves a cow. We're actually not that far away from my outpost. And it's raining again. I really have to get some shears and make up a bed. So it doesn't rain literally every single day. So let's head back to our outpost. We can... Uh, Oh yeah, we can tie the cow up to the outpost. They should be safe there for the time being. And we can see about collecting some more animals. And we got a zombie coming. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Ah. There's the thunder. And that's why I built these little outposts. Now we won't die. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, it's still raining, but uh, looks like it's safe. So let's... Grab our cow, who apparently got hit by one of those skellies. And let's run back. When you feed a animal the preferred food, cows, that would be grain, they will recover health. So that's, uh, I, I'm not going to be stuck with a cow on half health for the rest of the game. But I'm going to head back, hopefully have absolutely no excitement on the way. 
and uh, I'll bring it back in when we actually go home. And I've shown it before, but to make brine, one mill bucket of vinegar plus nine mill buckets of water creates ten mill buckets of brine. So nine buckets of yeah, nine buckets of salt water plus one bucket of vinegar will give us 10 buckets of brine. I can now use this brine with a bunch of cabbage I collected while I was out yesterday. We're going to brine the cabbage and then we can pickle the cabbage and we'll have pickled cabbage. Sauerkraut, anyone? So last episode, I used the bellows there along with a fire pit in order to heat up copper enough to make my anvil. I don't think I need to do that. I think I could have used my charcoal forge. So let's actually try that. So the charcoal forge, you need five cobblestone in an X formation with one at the bottom and then an empty slot here, which you fill with seven or eight bits of charcoal. You're then supposed to be able to light it. And it does actually work this way. That's awesome. So if I put this here, it will start to warm. I'm going to want two. It went out because I didn't have enough fuel in it. Now it will feed down. So this is coal that'll be used and it'll, it'll feed as it goes. Let's uh, try relighting it. There we go. Now it's working. So this will warm actually pretty quickly and you can warm multiple pieces at once. So heating two ingots to make a double ingot is a lot faster using the forge than hot swapping, literally hot swapping, uh, between a fireplace. Now I can use the bellows again to uh, heat this up, but charcoal burns at yellow, uh, white, yellow, white, which is all the way up here. Now I just need this to reach orange. Actually doesn't even need to be orange. It needs to be uh, bright red so I can work them. But you gotta be careful because if it gets too hot, they will melt. So now they are bright red. Okay. So let's put this in here. Go to blade. Now I need hit last, draw, second to last, draw, third to last. So I think I need I need the ham. Okay. Uh, there we go. It's been a very long time since I did this. Okay, those are very far back, so I need to go this way, and then what? Hit. Light hit. Any hit? Any hit, it looks like. Ah, not quite enough. So... Not hot enough to work. So let's heat that back up. Heat that one up. And this should maintain its um its memory of how much I worked on it already. It should. Yes, it does. So I want to do one of those and then draw, draw, medium hit. Ah, not quite enough. That's too much.
There we go. But it's poorly forged. But that's our first actual forged blade. Ooh, that almost got too hot. Let's do this again. We need hit, draw, draw, just like last time. Then we're going to want one, two, three. And this one's a well forged. So the better you do at forging, the um, better it's going to be in the end. Let's see. We got to heat these back up. That one can be wheel, uh, welded. When we're done with this, what we're doing is we're making our first shears. There we go. We have shears. Which means we can finally, one, shear sheep. But two, we can start cutting leather down and we can make a saddle and our first piece of armor. Now we can shear sheep, alpaca, and muskox. If we click over a few times, we can see that alpaca like grain and fruits. So we're going to have to feed them those to increase their familiarity so I can actually share them likewise sheep like grain so go and grab some stuff up feed them up it's going to take a few days you can only feed them once a day to increase the familiarity I'll show you that in a minute but it increases it by I think it's about six points and you need them to be about 30 points before you can start shearing them so it's going to take a few days in game before I can actually shear them once I can though I can actually make a bed and sleep through the night <laughs> so let's uh let's feed them some food you see the familiarity went up to six but i cannot feed them again and i'm shift clicking to feed them uh you haven't been fed You're already maxed out. Right? Oh, now he's maxed out. 35. Okay. And because he's a wild animal... Uh, well, he, <laughs> he's a wild animal. He was acquired from the wild. That's the max he can go up to. Um... I think that's all of them. Something else worth noting... Is... You can feed some animals rotten food. Um, they're not going to mind that it's rotten. They just mind that they're being fed. So, if some of your food rots, you don't necessarily need to throw it away right away. You can use it to feed. It's been a few days, but I've got this goat up to 18 familiarity, and I can start milking it. But, I'm going to need to get the familiarity up a little bit more. This one I can milk also. But I'm just trying to get everyone up. Oh, I can shear this now. You're already maxed out. I don't need to feed you anymore. Ooh. How did... Apparently, cows can climb... Okay, we learn something new every day. Cows are very good at climbing ladders. All right, but the farm is coming along. The barn is coming along. I am liking the look of that. I am going to make the hammer just to see if I can change how it looks a little bit and I'll give it a bit of an overhang also. But yeah, it's making progress. I'm liking it. I just need to make this whole area creeper proof. I'm really regretting 
turning surface mobs back on. Oh well, I like a little challenge. And here I just sheared my smallest alpaca, size 6. Gave me one wool, and you see it now has 1% wear and tear. This one's a bit bigger. Also only gave me one, still only one wear and tear. Let's see about my sheep here. Also gave me one. Glad you can't shear go goats. Alright, well that's four things of wool. And... How much do I need to make... See, one one thing of wool will give you eight yarn. And with the yarn, I can make a wool cloth. And with wool cloth, I can make a bed. So I need three bed, which is eight, 16. Wait. 16, 32, 48 yarn. Grab this. I've set up my uh, sewing table over here because I'm going to need that in a bit. I have some yarn there. I need to craft a loom quickly. Right. Okay. All right, we've got our loom. Let's uh, pop that down in here with the sewing room. How does this work? Aha. Oops. Ah, oh, this is kind of cool. Can hold down right click to uh, continuously weave. Um, there we go. All right, that's one wool cloth, and I need to do that three more times to make a bed. Uh, two more times to make a bed. At last, we can have a bed. Or at least a good night's sleep. Yay, we can finally sleep through the night. <laughs> and let's just keep rolling. We can actually craft our leather armor now. So let's see what's involved. To make the leather chest piece, we need eight leather sheets, two strips, one wool or string, and a bone needle. Oh, well, a needle. To make the strip, we need one leather and shears will make four. And to make the other strip or oh, it will same stuff different recipe so we can select what we want okay that's awesome uh, we needed four of those we'll make that up in a minute also let's toss that in toss this I'm missing something only needs one string. Ah, I put it in the wrong spot. There we go. We have our first bit of protection. Not going to make much of a difference, but every little bit helps. Now, I did want to make... 
this leather flask. It's gonna require leather sides, so okay, we make that. We need two of those. We need to grab a ladder, which you get sometimes when uh butchering large animals. And I need two string. And was that the sewing needle again? Now then, does this hold water like a jug does? Yes. Holds half a uh, half a bucket worth of water. Which means I don't need to carry that ceramic jug around, which only Colt carries a tenth of a bucket. What would I need for leggings? Uh, again, four strips of leather. I mean, four sheets, three strips, and a wool. And, or a string. Which I don't have enough for right now. Although I am making up more tannin, so I can tan up this large prepared hide. And so I can craft more armor in a bit. But now we have our first armor. We have a water flask. Does have durability. When it breaks, we have to repair it. Using a bladder, it looks like, is very simple repair. And, uh, yeah, I think we're good. So, as I alluded to at the beginning of the episode, Terraformer Craft is getting a lot of love. That's probably thanks to Mango, but I'd love to see it since Terraformer Craft is my favorite mod pack. Well, my favorite mod in general. But since it is getting a lot of love, from now on, we're going to do Terraformer Craft Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, we're going to have a Terraformer Craft episode. And Vault Hunters is going to be every Friday. I do plan on still having a bonus episode Wednesdays. It may not be every Wednesday. I'm aiming for every other Wednesday. It'll be as time permits, and it will be of, well, either Vault Hunters or Terraforma Craft, whichever I have more time for that week. I will let you know that tomorrow there will be a second Terraforma Craft episode. So, I hope you tune in then. Until then, I want to say thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Later.